Hey everybody, Ashley here. Let's talk drivers and downloads for the Dell XPS 59560. Now the one thing I want to say before I get started in this video, the disclaimer I'm going to say here is everything in this video is just really me sharing my own personal experience and it's not me really prescribing a fix for your particular system because I don't know any particular issues you have and it's not something that I can first hand look at. I'm sharing it because I think sometimes problems look worse than they are are, and sometimes if you take a little bit more intricate manual approach to updating your drivers, uh, it may be better for you and, and more helpful than just relying solely on the automatic updaters of your laptop manufacturer. So with all that said, let's get on with the video here. So what I've noticed in the last several months is I've noticed a number of patches. There was also a um, critical shutdown problem that happened with the Dell XPS 159560 where it would shut down out of nowhere. It was very frustrating, but it only affected me a couple of times in the last month or so and it's now not happened anymore so I think what happened is some of the recent patches that came out affected um, you know um, the the whole system configuration in a way that the system was uh, you know, um, getting to a point where it would run this critical shutdown. The Dell XPS 15 9560 has been working fine for me prior to like all these patches and things like that. I think because these patches were imperfect at first, it's been a little bit of a bumpy road with them. Uh, and I think that, you know, in a sense, I would say metaphorically, it's like the industry is getting its bearings on how to properly patch some things and work around some issues relating to those patches. And I think that that's just important to take into account account because I know the hardware for me has worked well. So if all of a sudden out of nowhere I'm seeing this critical shutdown issue, I, I didn't like to see that. It was very frustrating, but it also was something where I was like, well, I know the hardware is fine because it's been working fine and I recently patched some stuff. So I just connected the two and I'm like, you know, there's something going on with these patches and I'm gonna wait until I get the next software update and see if that fixes it. And sure enough, they've had a number of BIOS updates and they've had a num number of other updates and things. And, and now it seems to be settled. And I'm sort of back to square one. I'm not seeing that critical shutdown right now. Um, so it's been really good. I can't say that it's not gonna occur, but so far it's been really good. For the last couple of weeks, I've been actually encoding some video and stuff and I have not seen that issue where I saw it a couple of times in one day, like several weeks ago. So it was a really bad problem, uh, but it seems as though, you know, they, they might have fixed something there. Okay, so one thing I want to say about all of this is when I first started noticing these issues, I stopped relying on the auto update from Dell to pull down the drivers. That auto update doesn't seem to always recognize the latest updates on their website. I don't know why that's the case, but I religiously go there. When I'm seeing some issue, I will religiously go to their website. I will go to the drivers and downloads for my system with the service code for my system entered in there you know you should enter your service code and go there and then sort the updates by last updated date so just because you see a new last update date doesn't mean that that driver is newer than the one you already have but what I have noticed and what I generally do as a precaution is I will sort by that date and then download manually all the updates since the last time I manually updated things and just install all those updated drivers manually Manually. Now, because the meaning of that last update date is not necessarily when the driver was published, uh, that's an imperfect thing, but for me, it's good enough. It's like one of these things where you want to take steps to limit, you know, to maximize your success and limit problems. And so some of these things I'm talking about, they're not definitive things that are gonna, that you have to do to avoid problems. One little trick I do there is I try to take a screenshot of the first sorting that I do of all those drivers and I keep that in a file I save on my disk. So between reboots, I can go and look at the next one in that list and kind of, you know, make a note of what I last actually installed. And you can even use your, you know, little, uh, uh, you know, a screenshot, you know, in a photo or a paint edit program or something to kind of mark it off the list or something like that. And that I have found has really helped me get the latest BIOS updates right away. Uh, the latest Intel, you know, management things or chipset, you know, updates, all those like really critical sort of system uh, components. Now, if you're not a technical person, it can be a little bit of a bear to sort this thing and download these and install these because 
because you, you end up, you know, maybe not knowing, you know, well, should I download this one or download that one? M you know, most of the time I have found these days, it used to not be this way a long time ago, but generally these days I have found that when you reinstall a driver that you already have installed, it really doesn't induce any problems. Now I can't guarantee that that's the case because there was a time once when it wouldn't be uncommon to see an anomaly like that with a poorly written driver installer. But that was a long time ago when I would see those kinds of things. And generally uh, when you install the same version of a driver that you already have installed, it should be really a non-operation. It should be something that doesn't uh, hurt anything or affect anything. Some driver installers will tell you, hey, you already have this driver, so we're not going to install it. Some will go ahead and, you know, tell you, do you want to remove this? And I go through the removal process. And then I, you know, if it says, do you want to reboot? I'll reboot. And then I'll run the installer again to install the, the driver again. Now this sounds all very manual and cryptic. And why doesn't the auto update work, you know, perfectly? And I'm not saying it doesn't work perfectly for how it was designed. I just know that there's sometimes BIOS updates sitting there on the Dell website and my auto updater on the system is not pulling those drivers down. So I, I just find that, you know, the real concrete way to make sure you have the latest and greatest drivers is to go to that website, manually sort, and get, you know, start getting the ones that come after the last time you had actually updated your system in the same way. So like if I updated in, you know, the beginning of April, I'll sort and get the ones from like April 1st going forward or something like that. And, and there's one little, you know, thing I got to add to that. It's a disclaimer and I don't like doing this, but it's really important. You know, I'm not prescribing something for you guys. It's like really up to you if you want to do this thing that I just mentioned about manually updating the drivers, because I can't predict that your system is one that doesn't have a hardware issue and that, you know, doing the manual update of the drivers, could, you could do the wrong thing and, uh, you know, whatever. But, you know, most of these driver updates, you know, that I've seen these days, the installers and stuff, they're usually well written where they're not going to install a driver that's not right for your system. So despite how kind of difficult it can be to deal with you know, manually installing your drivers and stuff. It's, it's, it, you know, I have found that it's really hard to mess up a system that way these days, but I know it can happen from past experience, but generally it doesn't, you know, so there's always a risk there. And if you're going to manually install drivers and stuff, you know, you're taking on that risk. And so that's my disclaimer there. I'm not prescribing something across the board and saying all of your problems will be fixed. But all I'm saying is I had the critical shift shutdown issue, I saw a memory corruption blue screen thing, and those problems have not occurred in like the last week or so since I took the last BIOS update and whatnot. And by the way, today I noticed there was actually another BIOS update today, and I, it wasn't being pulled down by the auto updater. I wouldn't have found it had I not go to their web, you know, gone to their website today, and it's actually, actually dated uh, the 27th, actually, this driver, this BIOS update from Dell. So going to that website and looking for those BIOS updates manually is a way for you to ensure you're rock solid getting the latest BIOS update and stuff. So anyway, that's it. Those are some of the things I do to make sure my system drivers are up to date. All right, that's it. Thanks everybody. If you liked the video, I hope you'll click like. If you're not subscribed, I hope you'll subscribe. And I hope whatever the day is or the weekend, I hope you're having a good one and take care. All right, thanks. Bye.